Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1225. Hey, if you want to download the start file for Excel, or you want to download the start file for Word, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to see how to, in Word, do a mail merge. This is a letter we need to send out to our customers about their balance owed. Over in Excel, I have a table, field names at the tops, records in rows. These are the customer name, address, email, and the balance they owe. Now, the amazing thing about mail merge is I can, with one Word document, connect this letter to this database. And it will know to send out a new letter for each one of the records. Now, actually, when we get over to Word, we're going to filter it over in Word and filter out these zeros. Now, the cool thing about Mail Merge is if I use Mailings Ribbon tab, Select Recipients, if I tell it to look at this Excel workbook, if I add records or change the data, that Word document, Mail Merge, will totally update. However, I'm over here in Excel, and I actually want to convert this to an official Excel table, which is even more like a database. As I add new records to the bottom, or take away records, or dump a new data set, the table feature will totally update. And actually, it will add a benefit of carrying this formatting down so we don't have to type it in. Now, click in a single cell, any one cell, and go up to Insert and click on Table. Or I'm going to use the keyboard Control-T and Enter. Now I have an Excel table. Now, the Mail Merge does not need this. And it won't even pick it up. When we do Mail Merge, it'll see the sheet name. But again, if I add new records, the table feature is more dynamic. Now I want to go up to the Table Tools and go to Design. And over here, even though this name is not going to show up, if you have a, an Excel table, you definitely want to name this. So I'm going to type Customer Balances and Enter. If you go back up there and look, you can see it says Customer Balances. Right now, that's all I'm doing here. I'm going to save this and close the Excel file. Now, we're on the Mailings tab. I first need to connect this letter to that Excel database. So I click Select Recipients and Use an Existing List. I navigate to wherever my table is. I happen to have mine on the desktop in a folder called Mail Merge. And there it is. Double click. And see, it shows us the sheet name. It doesn't show us the table name. That's the correct one. Click OK. And now I can edit the recipient list. And this is awesome. Because yes, I could use sort, filter, find duplicates, and some things down here. But I'm just going to go scroll over and go to the Balance Due column. And just like in Excel, there's a little drop down. And down at the bottom, I can filter based on an advanced condition. Now, it's not really an advanced condition. I just tell it the field, Balance Due, Comparison, that just means the comparative operator. And I'm going to say greater than, greater than what? Zero. So field balance due. Comparison, that's greater than compared to zero. So anytime the balance due is greater than zero, we will see that record. And just like that, we see that it's filtered over here. And this is dynamic. If I change the data, change a few of these numbers to 0, those records will instantly be removed. And there will be fewer letters over here. So I'm going to click OK. Now the mail merge part. We want the inside address. And we want the first and last name. And we want their balance. All of that data is from the table. Now I'm going to highlight the inside address because I don't want that and hit Delete. And Mail Merge is awesome. They have an address block, so you don't have to add city, zip, et cetera. I just click the address block. Now most databases name their fields or their column headers correctly. Names like first name, last name, address, city, state, zip. And that's why it gets it correct here. If it wasn't matching up, then you click the Match Fields. And then you can choose. If it wasn't seeing the first name, you would simply click this. And notice, those are all the fields from our Excel table. So you can match any way you want. Click Escape. 
it got it right, so I'm simply going to click OK. Now that is code over here in Word that says go and get the right data from that Excel table. And you can look at the code by right clicking. And by the way, you can always tell it's a field. That means there's some code underneath doing something when you click on it and it's gray. But we can right click toggle field code and instantly you can see that's all the code telling this word letter to go over that database and get all the right address data. Right click toggle. It's a toggle. You can also use the keyboard Alt F9. But notice we have a bunch of code in here and later we'll have some more code here and here. Right now we have the code for address block and for the current date. So I'm going to Alt F9. That's a toggle. Alt F9, Alt F9. All right, now we need to come down here to Deer. We want to connect Deer and then first name and last name to the fields over in the table. So look at this. We go up to Insert Merge Field, and there are our field names from that Excel table. I'm going to click on First, Space, and then Insert Merge Field, and Last. If I Alt F9, I can see clearly there is some code under there to get first and last. Alt F9. Finally, we're going to need and by the way, I have my non-printing characters turned on home. That, that button right there is so important in Word because I need very carefully, and I control and zoom in, I need very carefully to get my merged code there to go right before the period but after the space. Notice if I didn't have that non-printing characters turned on, I wouldn't maybe be sure what exactly is there. All right, so you ready? Now I'm going to go up to mailings, insert merged, and balance due. Now we have, and I'm going to control and roll to zoom out. Now we have our letter. We can go up to preview results. And look at that. Isn't that totally amazing? There's the person's name, there's the address, and there's the amount. As I click the forward button, new customer, new names, and new amounts. All the way to the end, there are seven records. Now there's a problem here. It's the number formatting. When we did mail merge and connected it to a field over in that Excel table, or actually any database, that's a number. There's always a problem in mail merge. So we actually have to do number formatting over here in Word. Now, if you ever forget how to do this, because it's hard to remember exactly the right code to put in here, just go over to Google and type, Word mail merge currency format, or Word mail merge percentage format. And there's tons of links that will help you figure out how to do this. All right, now I'm going to right click toggle field code. There it is, merge field, balance due field. You need to come right to the end. And we need to type what's called a switch backslash, and then pound sign. That means whatever comes after is going to be the number formatting. Then I'm going to type a space. And I'm going to put a dollar sign. That means show dollar sign, comma for a comma separator for the thousands, and then pound decimal zero, 00. Now if you know custom number formatting over in Excel, it works pretty similarly here. We just had to know to put that little switch. Now when we right click and toggle back, it's not quite right. I'm going to come up to preview and click it once and then click it again. And now we have our formatting. If I go back through the records, I can see each record has the right number formatting. Now we can go and finish the merge. If I click the drop down, I'm going to say print. And it will ask me all current record or particular number. Click OK and it prints. I'm going to click Escape because I don't want to print. If you want to email them instead, watch this. This is amazing. Now it requires that we have an email field over in our Excel table, right? And sure enough, when I click Send Email Messages, it looks over to the database. It knows that there's a field called Email. If it didn't get it right, there's a drop down with all of our fields. Now we can type a subject line, something like Past Due Balances. You can Choose to put it as an attachment, plain text, or HTML. 
you can select all current or from and to. If you click OK, it'll email it. Please don't do it because those emails in the database are not real. But that's amazing. Now there's one big caveat for the email part of this. If you don't have Outlook on your computer, it will not work. So most cases, people have the full Office. And that's how it's meant to work. We're using Excel, Word Mail Merge, and then Outlook. All right, I'm going to click Cancel. That is quite amazing. Now I want to save this Control S because I want to test it. Notice right now we have seven letters because there's seven records over in our Excel table that have balances greater than zero. So I'm going to save and close this and then open the Excel table. So I'm going to open the Excel table, and I'm going to change some of the data. These two customers right here, I'm highlighting them both, typing 0 in the active cell. Control Enter to populate that 0 into both cells. Notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Control S. Now there will be only five letters in our mail merge. Now watch this. When I open up this Word document, it will automatically run the mail merge. It's asking you if it want to. I'm going to say yes. Now I go up to mailings. And sure enough, if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, boom, there it is, only five letters. Now let's do another test. Let's add some new records and see if our mail merge will pick it up. It should be. It's pretty amazing. I'm going to click Save back over in Excel. Now, this is an official Excel table using the Excel table features. So it's like a real database. When I come to the last record and hit Tab, it adds a new record. Now I'm going to type June Tab, Chin Tab, 1412th Street Tab. Now I'm in Excel, so when I type an S, it's looking above. This is called Autocomplete. When I hit Tab, it adds Seattle W. Tab, it looks above and it adds it. 98122. You know, and actually, when I made this data set up, this has the wrong zip code. Those are not real zip codes, but you get the idea. I have my email and tab, and the balance is 5,945 bucks. Control Enter. Now that's a new record, Control S. There's six of them here. So when I close this after saving it and run my mail merge, double click in that Word document. Clicking the yes, when I come up to my mailings and preview, you got to be kidding me. There's the 6-1 June. So that's pretty amazing using Excel and Word to do mail merge. All right, we'll see you next trick.